Miko, man, happy birthday. Um, we had a lot of amazing times together. So what I've prepared for you is some of my favorite memories of you and I, the chronicles of Meeks and Lenny Winks. I hope you enjoy. I think we first met in uh, Miss Allen's class where Adam, you and I met. And I think just because we were Asian, we all had some kind of like subconscious trust of each other and that's how we became partners in every project. I remember the first time you really made me laugh is we had this story um, about this scrawny little kid like me named Travis and he, he wanted to he wanted to like get stronger so he started like eating healthier and working out and at the end of the story he's like a gym class and he's doing pull-ups and he's doing like ooh ah and you were reading the part of Travis but you know you were like so laid back that uh, when you read the part you were like ooh ah and the whole class was laughing yeah, it was great. And in that class, we also met like a crazy kid named Taylor Brown. And I remember one day he was, he, he had like a pencil and he had like a game like called Stabs where you would go back and forth stabbing each other. He was like, Lenny, you want to play Stabs? And I remember um, I was really pissed off that day. So I just took a pencil and I just stabbed him in his hand as hard as he could. And he was bleeding all over the place. But the kind of like fucked up kid that he was, he, he didn't even look like he was hurt. I remember he also had like the CD, the CD he was trying to sell. And there were like little parts, it was a broken CD, it was all like cracked, with like little shards falling off. And he would try to go up to like our classmates and sell the CD and like little parts would fall off and you would be behind him going, oh yeah, yeah that's the special effect. And this is also the class where we met uh, Corley, Corey Garlow. And the thing we always, you know, he was like the biggest nerd, you know, I'm a, I'm a nerd, but you know, this kid like even outdid me. But uh, he, he would always be like, uh, the th thing we made fun of him for was like, he was like, you got the firewall, you need the firewall. I don't know why, I don't know, like, I don't even know, like, to this day, really, what a firewall really is. And we had that substitute teacher named Mr. Mr. Horn, but we always call him, like, Mr. Whore. He always had those, uh, pants with the, with the stains. We thought they were, we thought they were mustard stains, but, I don't know, they might have been something else. I gotta talk about one of our best friends, and one of the weirdest guys we've ever known, Adam Weo, you know, Adam Smokes Weedo. Uh, you know, he had that lunchbox that smelled so much like weed, but he never, he never confirmed nor denied that he smoked weed. Um, at this point, I don't think he did. I think he was just like a naturally really, really weird guy. And, you know, he looked like a, he looked like a Snorlax that came to life. You know, he was like so round and always like so sleepy. And even though he was half Korean, he was like the whitest Korean in the world, you know, with it, with his paleness and his freckles. I remember he had, he had a, older sister like no offense to her but her and Adam look so much alike and I said to her you look just like your sister he's like no nah, man I, I'm whiter than my sister and you know we, we always thought he was gay because he, he never talked about girls as much as we did and once again he never like really confirmed nor like n denied that he was gay like there would just be things that he would say or do that would make us think that like we were playing that boxing game and he was like, oh, I'm gonna fight that guy with the nice lips. So he was always kind of like the butt of our jokes. Like, I remember, you know, we'd have, we'd have like those sleepovers. Uh, and there's that old practical joke where you would take some shaving cream and you would put it in your victim's hand and then you would like tickle his face so they would smack themselves with the shaving cream. But we did this like one better. Like when he fell asleep, you know, like a Snorlax that he is, his ass crack was exposed. So we put the shaving cream in one hand and we kind of took like a feather or something and kind of like brushed it across his ass. So he started like smearing shaving cream across his ass. And when he woke up, I was like, dude, stay quiet because my mom's asleep, don't wake her up. So he could have gotten revenge right there, but just the kind of laid back guy that he was, you know, he didn't care. He was uh, half asleep. So we always, played this, we always played these jokes on him. I remember we were drinking that nasty blue Pepsi soda stuff, that stuff that tasted like, you know, it tasted like medicine, but um, we drank it just so we could stay up and we were always just like putting noodles in his medicine, you know, it's weird food stuff. Like we had that, we had that big chicken we all had for dinner that one day. Um, and you know, you and me, we had like forks and knives so we could like cut up the chicken. Adam, he just took his fingers and he made like a hook so he could like pull out the chicken. I was like, alright, you're, you're eating all that chicken yourself. We don't want anything to, to do with that chicken. But, so yeah, really weird guy, but... Man, he provided us with uh, so many laughs. Uh, Mr. Pippin's class was one of the most fun classes. That's when we met Taylor Amrick. And I remember when we first saw Taylor, you know, he had his 
currently rat tear going on, and he was like such a suck up to Mr. Pittman. And he, he was doing like his magic tricks to introduce himself to people. I remember thinking, man, there's no way I ever, I don't want anything to do with that dork. And I was such a hypocrite back then, because you know, I, was, I was just as much as a dork as he was. And of course, that's also where we met Reich. I remember the first day uh, Reich came to school, you know, he was sitting at the table by himself, like, looking really angry, staring at his fingernails, and we were laughing at him, like, well, what's wrong with his fingernails? Why, why is he so mad at his fingernails? So it was like, you and me and Taylor were sitting at a table. We invite this angry-looking Reich kid over to our table, you know, Reich the Dyke. And we thought Taylor and Reich were brothers, you know, they, you know, they kind of looked alike, they were, they were both from Colorado, and they kind of had like this sibling rivalry going on. We had an experiment with a Bunsen burner. Reich just took like an eraser and put it on the flame of the Bunsen burner, and he just like burned the shit out of Taylor, like, it was so weird at Riviera, like, we could just get away with shit like that. They both just loved putting like gel in their hair. I remember one time we had an experiment with a balloon, and you know when you put a, when you rub a balloon on your head, you know, you get that static and then your hair will stick up. So right, he looked like really excited one time, he got the balloon and just started rubbing his head on it. And then you saw the balloon and how it had all this nasty gel crap on it, so it was like, okay, we're not going to use that balloon, no one else wants to touch that balloon. Reich was always the one who got caught doing stuff in that class. Like, I remember one time I was talking about porno, and then Reich started talking about porno, and then Mr. Pitt was like, Reich, stop talking about porno. This one time, like, Taylor and Reich got into, like, some kind of shoving match, and Taylor shoved Reich, Reich shoved Taylor, Mr. Pitt was like, Reich, stop shoving people. One of the most epic parts of that class was we had this newspaper contest. You know, we had to uh, roll up or stack newspapers on top of each other, and uh, I remember we at the end of the contest, we had, like, five seconds left. You got on top of a chair, and then on top of a desk, you were holding up, like, a rolled up newspaper, like, looking really heroic. And you put, like, the rolled-up newspaper on top of another rolled-up newspaper, and there was, like, five, four, three, two, one. When there was one second left, that newspaper on top slid into the newspaper on the bottom, so that it only added, like, one centimeter to the whole stack, so I don't remember if we won or not. But, like, obviously, you know, the, the best part of Mr. Pittman's class was when we had that assignment to make a play about anthrax. And I, we didn't even really know what anthrax was, so I was just making up crap like, oh, we should have a scene where the anthrax is on us and we, we, should, we have to go shower it off. And of course, Taylor was like, yeah, let's have a shower scene. And you know, to, the, to this day, anytime I talk to Taylor, one of us has to bring that up.